Da-da-da-da-da. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. This is your home for learning how to play on the guitar, the mandolin, or the banjo at times. We switch out each and every week. I put a new video up here on the site, and I'm happy to have you with me today. I've done a cross-picking version um, on guitar for I'm a Pilgrim, but one of my favorite videos on YouTube is um, a video of Clarence White, who's one of my heroes, and his brother Roland White, who's one of my heroes, um, playing, going back and forth on an old TV, Bob Baxter's old TV show, playing I Am a Pilgrim. And I just, I love Clarence's playing. It's different from mine. I can't possibly copy his timing or uh, how he uses his fingers and stuff. I, I haven't dove into that side of it so much. But I do want to um, offer kind of a tribute type lesson for I'm a Pilgrim using some licks that, that he might use. I encourage you to just go and, and search on YouTube for, uh, for Clarence White, Bob Baxter TV show, I'm a Pilgrim, and find that video um, and just watch it. And visit Roland's website, I think it's rolandwhite.com, and purchase um, some of Clarence's uh, tabs for his guitar books. Um, they're just incredible. Um, just a super family and obviously super talented. But uh, let me play it for you here, and then we're going to dive into it measure for measure, um, learn how to play this sucker. Then I'm going to have another video segment on the site where we play it very slowly all the way through, and then I have three different uh, rhythm speeds for you to practice along with, okay? So if you're watching this on YouTube here in a little while, I'll ask you to go over to my website, banjobenclark.com. Join as a Gold Pick member where you can have access to everything, almost, except my social security number. pay some tribute to Clarence and to, uh, to Tony Rice as well. Uh, Clarence was Tony's biggest inspiration. It's very obvious when you hear his playing and of course Tony just took it to a completely new level. That's why they're two of my favorite guitar players. Um, this timing in this song is difficult, okay? And it would be near impossible to tab out the exact timing uh, that Clarence and Tony play on a lot of things. Um, because it's just so much feel. It's not, they'll, they'll play in between 16th notes, okay? So um, to keep it from being that difficult, I've tabbed this out as straight ahead as we can. Um, but one thing that we do want to note, actually two things, one is that it's going to be played in a swing style, meaning that our eighth notes are going to be weighted. They're not going to be even. So if I was going to play a bunch of eighth notes in a row, normally we might play on... In this song, it's swinging, so it's going to be more like this. However, they're all eighth notes, and you'll hear that. And that really fits in well with all the triplets that we're going to be playing. The second thing that I want to mention is that normally I am a huge pick stroke Nazi, so to speak. Okay, I'm always preaching about if it's a downbeat, we play a down stroke. If it's an upbeat, we play an upstroke. Okay, we're going to break those rules in here. And Clarence and Tony, they break those rules all the time. They play with their fingers a lot. And uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to do everything with flat pick. But we are going to break some rules because of all the triplets and the odd timing. Uh, that being said, the arrows beneath all the notes there in the tab are the pick strokes that I use for this one. However, if you feel like some uh, different pick strokes work better for you, have at it. Let's look at the kickoff there. Uh, measure one. This is how we would kick the song off um, if we were going to start it or if the break was coming over to the guitar. This is how we'd lead into it. I'm not going to explain every little piece of this since it is a more advanced tab. Um, I'm just going to touch on the stuff that, uh, that's, that's the hardest, okay? Um, first little kickoff is pretty easy measure. Okay, no 
notice how I'm swinging those notes? Two and three and four and... Now at that point, I want you to go ahead, you could actually probably go ahead and make a G chord uh, shape because in the second measure, we're gonna need your ring finger up there on that third fret. Because we're gonna do two quick down strokes here and they're hammer-ons, they're 16th note hammer-ons. We're gonna do them fast. Okay, measure two. And then it's really important to count, okay? And uh, to use the TEF file that I include with this, um, you can find uh, out how to use that in my FAQ section of the site so that it, your computer will play the tab for you. Um, then really pay attention to pick strokes. We're gonna go back and forth between this D string and those two notes. So measure two sounds like this. And then that carries on over into the first beat of measure three. That's gonna happen several times in this song. Okay, I have a rest there at the beginning of measure three, but we actually are keeping the notes um, uh, resounding through that rest. That's just to let you know that we're not playing an actual note on the first beat there. So. Then we're gonna pick up on the end of one, and now we're gonna get into our first little batch of triplets. Most of these triplets um, are gonna have some kind of hammer on or pull off or slide in them uh, to make them a little easier to play. But this particular triplet run in measure three starts on the second beat, and we're going to start with a hammer on, with an upstroke up here on the first fret, and then a pull off, upstroke, so. And then we're going to immediately slide, and I like to just say triplet, triplet, whenever I play them to make sure our timing's correct. Triplet, triplet. Triplet, triplet. Now, um, those last two notes there in measure three, you can do a down and an up or an up and a down. Uh, I noticed that I'll kind of do um, both just depending um, on the time that I play it, but I do have it written as a down and an up. So let me just play um, measure three for you again slowly. Two, ready, go, one, and triplet, triplet, triplet. Now leading into measure four, pretty simple measure here. We're back to eighth notes. Okay, so we're just going to slide from the third fret on the D string to the fifth fret. Then slide back down from the fourth to the third fret. We want to play that note there, that last fourth fret, pretty loud so that that tone of that F note there carries through um, the next measure because that's going to be our clue as to what chord we're going to. You notice that we're playing a G7 chord. The rhythm is in measure five. Well, what is the seven of a G? That's an F note. So we're catching that in the lead right there. Same note. And so that's going to tell the listener's ear, get ready, we're going to a C chord. And then let that ring out. Once again, we have a uh, no uh, note on the first beat of measure five. We're going to start with an upstroke. Okay, so four and five together sound like this. Here we go. And that last note there, measure five, I would play that hard as well because we want that note to ring out because we're going to match it with an octave, a C, beneath it. Okay, we want them both ringing. There you go. And now, once again, your timing really matters in measure six there. So count it. One and two and triple it four and. Okay, sometimes it's harder to do slow than fast. But one and two and triple it. Good. Now, keep your ring finger down there in, in measure six because we're going to need it to slide to the fifth fret immediately in measure seven. This is kind of a, a fast move, but we're gonna slide to the fifth fret and then catch this uh, third fret up here on the E string. 
measure seven. Good, now we're gonna have three triplet runs in a row. And this is that great Tony type lick here uh, using these uh, pentatonic notes. But uh, we've got triple lit, triple lit, triple lit. Okay, so I'm gonna play measure seven for you really slowly. Here we go. Ready, go, one, and triple it, triple it, triple it. Yeah. Good, good. Let's take a look at measure eight now. <laughs> 